or missionaries or just wherever your people are assembled. God, I pray that they will be edified. I pray that they will be drawn to you and, and uh, Lord, be built up and strengthened in you and help us all to be Christians, Lord, real Christians. Yes. Great God, and thank you for giving us this opportunity this evening uh, to assemble in your name. Yes. And we ask your blessings now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Everybody say in Jesus' name. Sister Amen. Emily is going to come. Praise God. We're going to let her make announcements. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. All right. This Friday, the 10th, there is a section for youth rally in McGregor. Um, the Griffins are hosting it. It will be at 730. Um, it is focused for the youth, but any of these events, if you would like to go to them, you're welcome to. And then Saturday, the 11th, um, there's going to be outreach here in Belton. They're going to meet here at the church at 10 a.m., um, and they're planning to go till noon. So I believe their goal is to go to a different neighborhood every time. So um, if you would like to come and do outreach, that will be happening Saturday at 10 a.m. And then this Sunday is our friends and family service at 11 a.m. We're not having Sunday school. The plan is to have it um, at the Yeti Polk Park Pavilion. We will have our chili cook-off to follow. So um, I have sent out messages trying to figure out who else is going to make chili. If you're planning on making chili, please let me know so I know how, how many entries we have. Um, if you're not making chili, that's okay. I have put out a, a list of several of the things that you can bring, um, including dessert that goes along with chili. So um, if you haven't responded to that, please respond and let me know. Um, next week, the 16th to the 18th, um, Brother Griffin is hosting a conference in McGregor. He's calling it the Refresh Conference. Anyone is welcome to go. It's open up to our section. There's going to be day sessions um, on Friday and Saturday at 2, and then Thursday night, Friday night, and Saturday night. Um, our evening uh, services at 7 p.m. Our worship team is going to be doing the music for the evening services. Um, the day services is going to be Reverend O.L. Powell teaching. Um, he's our former Texas District Secretary. And then the evening is going to be Reverend Fred Childs. So I believe it's going to be really good. You're more than welcome to come. Um, and then Saturday, November 18th, that morning, um, is the final Youth Bake Sale for 2023. Um, it will be at the Temple Feed Supply. Um, Sister Danielle has graciously offered if you need um, help getting the baked goods there because it is a little bit more of a distance um, to get there that morning. Um, just coordinate with her, um, let her know and she will make arrangements to uh, somehow get your baked goods from you and take them out there. Um, and then the week of Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving is upon us, two weeks from tomorrow. Um, our midweek service is gonna be on Tuesday that week instead of Wednesday in order to give everyone time to prepare for family and prepare food and all that good stuff. So our midweek service, the week of Thanksgiving, will be on Tuesday the 21st. Um, and then I had made mention of this. We went, we're going ahead and starting on this. Um, the Christmas for Christ offering. Um, the designated day to take it up is uh, Sunday, December 24th, which is Christmas Eve this year. Um, but uh, it supports North American missions, home missions. So... Um, if you pray about it, think about it, the Lord lays a particular number on your heart, amount on your heart there um, in the foyer and the literature display. I have put, there's two sets of envelopes that go from a dollar all the way to a hundred. So you can pull whichever one you want to give and um, you can go ahead and give it between any time between now and December 24th, or if you want to wait until then, you can wait until then. Um, but just know that those are out there for you um, to grab um, for that. And I think that is all that I have for the moment. 
Um, as always, if you have questions, don't hesitate to ask, and Lord bless y'all. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Well, Brother Slaves, come up and sit right here. Just sit there for a minute. We're going to talk a minute. But praise God. Amen. I, I am, uh, I know we say this, uh, but is it a realization to us that God is in this place? Amen. Amen. How many people got the Holy Ghost? Amen. Where is he at? Yeah. yeah. Brother Mooney's got it right. Right inside of here. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Now, <clears throat> if you draw near to him, he'll draw near to you, it says, right? Amen. Amen. But even when you don't feel him, he doesn't leave. Right. Yeah. Right? Sometimes you get distracted from uh, the, uh, the uh, consciousness that he is in you. Do you ever do that? Yeah, you do. You get busy. That's why you need to go pray all the time. It's not that you're going to find him where he went. He's right in there, but we're not really there a lot of times. We're not there. Uh, we're not conscious of his presence that is actually resident inside of us. That's why Paul told Timothy to stir up the gift that's in you. It, it wasn't that it had gone anywhere. It's there. Amen? Amen? He said, when the spirit of truth is coming, when the comforts come, it'll abide with you forever. It says that. Doesn't it say that? I read that in John. It's Amen. inside of there. <clears throat> and uh, praise God. The Bible says, Paul was uh, speaking to the Christians in one of his letters and it says now to him that is able to him that is able and he's right in here yeah. to him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above anything you're able to ask or think right ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. In other words, and that power is the Holy Ghost. Amen. Right? And it has to do with our faith too. Amen. And again, we drift. Uh, maybe not physically drift, but we drift in our consciousness of his presence in our life. Right. You know? <clears throat> and we're fixing to pray for Brother Slim Street when I'm talking about this. Uh, because you have within you what's needed uh, to lay hands on sick and heal. Amen. I mean, it's not you, it's what's in you. Right. Amen. And uh, if you can recognize the presence of God that's inside of your life and pray with faith, not that he's off some far distant place, but he's actually residing inside of you if you've got the Holy Ghost. He is there, you know. And uh, I remember Jeremiah telling me one time, <clears throat> I can't remember the story, you may remember it whenever I began to tell you, but I remember one of his kids was sick and he was, he, uh, it was back when they were little and he was laying down by them or something. <laughs> you remember that? And, and you just, did you feel impressed that he was, Lay your hand over on them. Uh, and, I know one of them had fever, and uh, they were just at the point with the fever, you know, they're just firing up and just, yeah. you know, it, it just makes you feel horrible, you know. And I had to pray for them, you know, within minutes they were running around the house playing. And yeah, you know what that was? That was that Holy Ghost. Yeah, no more fever. That's that Holy Ghost, isn't it? And everybody that's got the Holy Ghost, that is resident inside of them. Yeah. You know, that spirit, uh, all these gifts work with that one and such same spirit, right? Yeah. In other words, it's the Lord. And there's times where God gives you a word 
Let's say, how many of you have ever experienced that? You know, I have. I've experienced it many times. Where, you know, I've been witnessing the people before and felt like I was learning while I was talking to them. You ever done that? I'm sure you have. But you know what that is? It's that Holy Ghost. That's resident inside of you. And according to the occasion, it's ministering through you. Right? And so we're fixing to pray for Brother Salinas. And I said all that, that you might have faith. Because, listen to me, uh, you know, the Bible says, if any sick among you, let them pray over them, anointing them with oil. Right? This is just symbolic of the Holy Ghost. Right? Baptism is symbolic of washing away our sins. <laughs> uh, we believe in doing it. We believe in putting this all on. But it's uh, it's what we're applying. And we, we lay the name of Jesus on sick people because that's where our faith lies, is in the sacrifice. Amen. And he gave us his name that we might apply that sacrifice to what was done at Calvary. And we're asking, like those oil thrown people, we're asking not just this oil, but the oil of the Holy Ghost, and that Holy Ghost is in us. Yes. Right? We're asking the Lord, just like he did the Jeremiah's child, we're asking the Lord to take care of this. Amen. And we're going to have faith because the name of Jesus is worthy. Amen. What Jesus did is sufficient yes. to take care of this problem. Yes. It's not what we've done, right? Amen. But if two of us agree, it says, as touching anything, it shall be done of our Father which is in heaven, which is talking about the Spirit of God. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So I want the men to come up, and we're going to pray. Brother Freddie had shingles a while back. Come on up, Jeremiah. I want you to. Amen. Come on, Brother Freddie. I'm going to pray right here. Praise God, these other men. And I want you to realize the God that's inside of you. Amen. He's inside of you. Amen. Praise God. Expect him to do something. Ask the Lord to remove this problem. Amen. Praise God. Lord Jesus. Praise God. We acknowledge you. Thank you. God, there's more than two of us. There's more than two of us. Lord, thank you. You us in the dirt. We ask you to know. Not because we deserve it. Because you paid for it on the cross. We lay the name of Jesus here. Lord, he's like we're anointing with oil. We want the Holy Ghost to be upon this knee right now. The anointing. The anointing. The destroyer's yoke. The anointing you put inside of us. You put that inside of us, Lord. The Holy Spirit. Lord, we ask you. Says the prayer of faith yes. 
shall save the sick. Right? Yes. And the Lord shall raise him up. Yes. And if he committed any sins, he even says that, they shall be forgiven. Yes. Thank you, Lord. I'm grateful for that, aren't you? Yes. Amen. Yes. Praise God. Well, I'm glad Adam's here. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I'm glad you're all here. Amen. Praise the Lord. Pray for Brother Buddy. He's better now. But he he has issues uh, with migraines. And uh, he had been up so long, I didn't, I don't know if he's out there or not, is he? But I don't know. I don't think he is. I, I was at the hospital with him for a long time. And uh, it's mainly a waiting game, you know. It's not, uh, it's not that necessarily that he was in pain all that time. He had been in pain all through the night with a headache. And it was causing him to see lots of things, you know. I don't know. I've never had a migraine, so. Uh, but I hear that they're very, very serious, you know. And they're very painful. But anyway. I, I prayed over him, and uh, I would encourage you to keep him lifted up to the Lord. And let's pray to the Lord to please to remove that. Amen. Amen. Yeah. He's had him since he was five years old, and issues with him. That's what he told me, you guys. And, uh, you know, Jesus paid for it. Yeah. Yeah. And I talked to him about that, and uh, I think Buddy has pretty good faith. And uh, let's just keep him lifted up. I believe the Lord would have him healed. Yes. yes. Amen. Amen. And so if we, again, pray one for another that you may be healed. Yes. yes. Praise God. Pray for one another. Yes. Amen. Well, God is good. Yes. All the time. All the time. We're going to look this evening in the epistle of James. <coughs> Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Chapter 4. And Dang. praise God. I, I try to seek the Lord about what he wants me to talk about. And uh, this is, we call this potter's wheel. Amen. Right? Amen. When you're on a potter's wheel, you, you're sh being molded and shaped. Amen. Shaping. Into a vessel of honor. Amen. Yes. That's what we're wanting. And so that's what we try to do here. We talk about Christian things, you know, Amen. what it means to be a Christian, how to be a better Christian, things that God wants us to be, and things that God wants us to get rid of. And Amen. sometimes, you know, just variety, just mold us, Lord, into a vessel of honor. Amen. So we're going to talk about this this evening, <clears throat> James chapter four, verse eleven and twelve. Mm -hmm. Speak not evil one of another, brethren. He that speaketh evil of his brother and judges his brother speaketh evil of the law and judges the law. But if thou judge the law, thou art not a doer of the law, but a judge. And this is the special verse that I want to pay attention to. There is one lawgiver, James says, who is able to save and to destroy. Who art thou that judges thy brother? Judges another. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Lord bless us tonight as we study your word in Jesus' name. God bless you. Be seated. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Again, we talk about a lot of things. And, uh, you know, people will take a lot of these scriptures and take them out of context. Uh, especially whenever you're standing, trying to stand for the truth and, and not, uh, you know, compromise and things like that. We don't want to compromise. You know, we want to live for God and serve God and do it right. Amen. And uh, sometimes in your witnessing to people, you'll hear people accuse you of judging them, right. you know, 
And it's not that we are judging people uh, in the sense of putting people in heaven or hell. That's judgment. Amen. Judgment is a judicial decision. That's what that word means, judgment. A judicial decision. And uh, in other words, we're not sending people to heaven or to hell. Amen. And that's basically what I want to talk to you about. We do have Jesus and the apostles. Jesus told us, you will know a tree by the fruit it bears. Amen. So whenever he's talking about not judging, he says also in the gospel, in the epistle of John, brethren, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God. Yeah. So that's not judgment. Amen. That's not the judgment that uh, is spoken of here. But when we talk about don't judge people, we're talking about there is only one that when it comes down to it, that is the judge of mankind. And it's not the one that's talking to you tonight. Amen. There's only one that is tells who's saved and who's lost. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Sometimes if we're not careful, we can we can uh, find ourselves making comments when we're putting ourselves in that place. And that's basically what James is referencing here. Uh, we have no right to put ourselves into that place. That we are the judges of who is saved and who is lost. Amen. Amen. We do stand for the word and we preach the word. And the word itself testifies who is saved and who is lost. Amen. Amen. But we as persons do not have the right given to us to make that decision. Amen. Praise God. <clears throat> Praise God. In Isaiah chapter 33, verse 22, amen, it says, now there's several places it says like this, but this is just one for the sake of time. I won't pull a bunch of them up. But it says, for the Lord is our judge. Mm -hmm. The Lord is our lawgiver. That's basically what James just has got through mentioning. The Lord is our king. He will save us. Amen. So who's our judge and who's our lawgiver? The Lord is. The Lord. Amen. And it's capital L-O-R-D talking about Yahweh. Amen. Yahweh God is our Amen. judge. Law, uh, Yahweh God is our lawgiver. Amen. Praise God. There's only one that can actually make that decision. Amen. Praise God. Well, you're going to help make it. <laughs> that decision of who is saved and who is lost personally for your own life. Amen. Praise God. But ultimately, God has the say-so. Amen. Amen. We don't have to be afraid of people. Praise God. <clears throat> we do need to fear God, though. We do fear God. It's really not what I say that matters. Really and truly. This is between you and your maker, you and your creator. You know what I'm here for is to try to help people make it. You know, to preach his word. And that's what other believers are. They're, they're people that have uh, been, had the word of God presented to them. And he's encouraged them to take that word and share it with others so that others can believe it and act upon it. And help people to be saved. Amen. Praise God. He is our judge. And it is God that we need to fear. Amen. Amen. In Luke's gospel, chapter 12, verses 4 and 5, <clears throat> Jesus said, And I say unto you, my friends, be not afraid of them that kill the body, and after that have no more that they can do. But I will forewarn you whom you shall fear. Fear him which after he hath killed hath power to cast into hell. Yea, I say unto you, fear him. Because it's he, it's he that is the judge. It is he, is he is the one that's going to make the judicial 
decision on every one of us. Amen? Praise God. And you know what? It's going to be on an individual basis. Amen? It's just not going to be you put into a crowd of people. You know, the Bible says we should all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. It says that. Amen? Praise God. And uh, we need to uh, do that now. I want to encourage everybody to do that now. But we don't have to fear man. It doesn't matter what man does to us. But what does matter, the one we need to be conscious about and concerned about, and that's, that will include when we're out of sight of people. You know? It doesn't matter what people see. It matters what God sees. Amen. Amen. Because he is the judge. You know, it doesn't matter what you get by with from Brother Ratley. Hey Amen. I'm not going around sneaking in people's windows and seeing if I can catch them doing something wrong. Hey Amen. That's not what it's about. Because when you leave this place, I don't go with you. And it doesn't matter if I did. Because I'm not your judge. God, though, is your judge. And he is the one you need to be concerned about. He's the one you need to have peace with. Hey Amen. He's the one you need to have a relationship with. Amen? Amen? And, you know, when you have a relationship with him, you'll have it with his people. Yeah. But I'm just saying, you know, out of everybody and anybody, it, it matters supremely that you have things in harmony with God. Because he is the one that makes the decisions of salvation. Amen? Now, there's many scriptures in the Bible that tells us not to judge one another. It does tell us. Praise God. You know, I think instead of judging you, God's more concerned with me trying to help you. Amen? You know, I've never seen anybody that if I wanted to, I couldn't find something that they needed to improve, including the one that I shaved. Amen? And I'm trying. I'm working on him. Amen? I said, I'm working on him. Praise God. But I'm not out trying to judge people. Amen. I am trying to reach people. And I believe the word of God. Amen. And yes, when I see lives uh, wayward away from the word of God, it concerns me. You know? Because look at John chapter 12, verse number 48. Brother Rome, can you pull that up? I didn't get it up in my notes. John 12, 48. <laughs> Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. You get it? No. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. All right. Praise God. Jesus said this. Jesus said this. He said, he that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words, my words, that's what he said, my words, right? Mm -hmm. Hath one that judges him, the word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. Praise God. I think the previous verse, he himself said, I didn't come to judge people, I came to save people. He said that, Jesus said that, because he was the sacrifice. His purpose in coming wasn't to judge people, but he did tell us the words is what will judge mankind whenever the last day comes. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Here, Romans got it up here. Yeah. And if any man hear my words and believe not, I judge him not. Amen? Isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. Praise God. For I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. Amen. Praise God. What's, what's John 3, 16? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Yeah. For God sent not his Son to condemn the world. That's what he's talking about here. Amen. But that the world through him might be saved. Right. God wants people saved. Yeah. But... If people don't pay attention to his offer of salvation, his sacrifice, amen, 
His sacrifice, he came with purpose to save them. But if they refuse that, in the last day, his word will be what's judging people. Amen. And his word is the word of God. Amen. 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 Because he was God manifest in the flesh. Amen. Praise God. We see judgment in Luke chapter 16 in verse number 19 in the story of the rich man Lazarus. It says there was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus which laid at his gate full of sores and desired to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels and into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receiveth the good, the, uh, thy good things and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted and thou art tormented. Besides all this, notice what he's saying, Besides all of this, between us and you, there's a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you uh, cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. Then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him unto my father's house. I have five brethren that he may testify to them, lest they also come to this place of torment. Abraham said unto him, They, <clears throat> they had Moses. And the prophets let them hear them. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one uh, went unto them from the dead, they will repent. He said unto him, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. You know what? Uh, this rich man was wanting Abraham to send Lazarus. But Abraham said there's a great guff fix. In other words, you know what he's saying? I can't. I cannot change what is. Amen. And neither can Lazarus because we didn't make the decision of where everybody ended up. Amen. Abraham didn't have the ability to change where Lazarus went to or where the rich man went to. That was God's decision. God's decision. And those two people right there those two people, it didn't matter how many people on earth patted the rich man on the back. And it didn't matter how many people walked by Lazarus and said, I wonder what's wrong with him. Why has God forsaken him? It didn't matter about people's opinions. What mattered is what their maker thought. Amen? Amen. Their maker saw it totally different than what other human beings saw it. Amen? Right. Praise God. Evidently, the beggar was still a person of faith even though he went through traumatic things. Yeah. While the rich man, though it looked like he fared well every day and it looked like the blessings that God was upon him, but his life did not prove that to be so. Amen. He was not right with his maker. The one that really mattered was not the people that was patting him on the back and the giving him the attaboys. Amen. What mattered was the one that he was going to stand before one day. Amen? Amen? Praise God. Because none of those other figures can save you. And none of them can, can determine your destination. But there's one that we do need to fear. And that is our creator. Amen? That is God. Amen? Amen. We need to fear God. Amen? We need to make sure that we double, make sure that we have things right with our creator. Amen? Amen. No matter what other people's opinion is. Amen. What matters is what God says. Amen. Amen. That's all that matters. Amen. Right. Praise God. The good thing about our God 
is that he is a righteous God. Amen. Amen. He is a good God. I want to read. I thought about this over in Genesis chapter 18, verse 23 through 26. Praise God. The Lord got fed up with Sodom and Gomorrah. And he was fixing to judge that place. He was fixing to make a judicial decision. Amen. Praise God. But before he went to this place and sent his angels to destroy it, he went by his friend's house. <laughs> Abraham was called the friend of God, wasn't he? Amen. Amen. That's what James, I believe it was, said. He was called the friend of God. Amen. And he decided to go by his friend's house with a couple of angels. And uh, you can just imagine why he wanted to go by there. And, and, and I, can, I can imagine that he went by there because he was wanting somebody uh, to stand in the gap. Amen. There was some people there that uh, Abraham loved in the city of Sodom and Gomorrah by the name of Lot and his family, which had separated earlier from Abraham and decided to dwell near Sodom and Gomorrah and the plains there, eventually winding up in Sodom and Gomorrah. So God comes by and he, he's going to uh, visit Abraham. And it says in verse 23, Genesis 18, 23, and Abraham drew near and said, he's talking to God here. He said, wilt thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked? Now you got to understand, he's the judge of all the earth. Yeah. Amen. And he's fixing to go judge. He's going to fix to go make a judicial decision about Sodom and Gomorrah because of all their corruption. So Abraham is conversing with the Lord. He said, peradventure, there be 50 righteous within the city. Wilt thou also destroy and not spare the place for the 50 righteous that are therein? I don't know what Abraham was thinking. Maybe he was thinking, you know, there's Lot and there's Lot's wife and Lot has some children. And, you know, when all was said and done, he got two of his daughters out. But do you know he had other children too? He did because he went to his sons-in-law's. That means he had some other daughter with him. Yeah. And he had a wife that he was trying to get out. Of course, she looked back, didn't she? Yeah. Amen. But in the beginning, when Lot went into Sodom, or went to the plains at least, ended up being in Sodom, he had so many servants and households, such a great household, that him and Abraham could not dwell together. Right. Their herdsmen were squabbling. So maybe, maybe... Uh, you know, Abraham shot a figure out there that perhaps that he thought might cover that crew. Perhaps he, it did say that Lot was a righteous man. It says that in Peter's writings, that that righteous man dwelling among them vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. With the people of Sodom and Gomorrah's unlawful deeds. Amen. He was a righteous man. And so the Abraham, he knew that God was a righteous God. And we do serve a righteous God. He's, a, he's not like a lot of the judges of the earth that can be paid off. Right. A lot of the judges of the earth, amen, they can be paid off. Yeah. They can be. Unfortunately, it happens. Yeah. It's, it's happened quite a bit, I think, lately mm -hmm. yeah. in our country. Right. It appears to be. Yeah. But God's not like that. He is a righteous judge. And so Abraham begins to intercede. Probably in the back of his mind, he's thinking about Lot and his crew. Amen. And uh, I don't know, maybe he got to pondering about it. Maybe some of them, because of where they're living, they're not quite where they need to be with the Lord. But they may not be some righteous people, you know. Let's go down to 40. <laughs> we'll be in safer territory, 40 to 30 to 20, and all the way down to 10. Yeah. And the Lord, uh, Abraham was trying to get him uh, down there at a number where 
I believe where at least a lot of his immediate family would probably be saved. Amen. If they were righteous people. He said, Permission to be 50 within the city, would they also destroy and not, and not spare the place for the, for the 50 that are therein? And then Lot says, I mean, Abraham says this to the Lord, that be far from thee to do after this manner, to slay the righteous with the wicked. And that the righteous should be as the wicked, that be far from thee, shall not the judge of all the earth do right. He's the judge of all the earth. There is not another judge that's able to save and destroy. Amen. As the Lord is. Amen. Amen. And the Lord said, if I find in Sodom 50 righteous within the city, then I will spare all the place for their sake. Can I tell you, God is not going to to make an e evil decision against righteous people. Amen. Amen. He will not pronounce evil upon people that are living righteously. Amen. Yeah. We need to live righteously. Amen. No matter what condition our world is in. Amen. Yes. And you know what? We've read it several times uh, over the past weeks about uh, like as it was in the days of Noah and like as it was in the days of Lot that's the way it's going to be in the, at the coming of the Son of Man right? Yeah. Amen just like they were dwelling amongst the wicked amen we find ourselves in that very same place amen and the Lord he's the judge of all the earth amen yeah. praise God it's important for us that we don't fall prey to the wickedness of the surroundings around us, but that we maintain a life of righteousness. Amen? Amen. Amen. The world got real corrupt in Noah's days, but the Bible says he, he was a preacher of righteousness. Amen? And I want you to know something. God was fixing to wipe it out, but I want you to know it. He wasn't going to wipe a righteous person out, Amen. and he's not going to wipe a righteous person out today. Amen? Amen. He's going to save his people Though he comes to judge this world. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Praise God. It's important for us. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Not in the eyes of men, but righteous in the eyes of God. People of faith. Amen. Yeah. People yeah. that live for God. People that embrace godliness and the things of the Spirit of God. Amen. It's important for us to live for him. Praise God. And, and I believe that the Lord, he purposely came by Abraham's way because he wanted Abraham to intercede. That's basically what Abraham was doing. He was kind of giving the Lord some intercessory prayer. Yeah. Amen. That's what we need to be doing. Isn't it? We need to be sending up some intercessory prayer. Lord, save your people. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Uh, keep your people in this evil time. Keep them. Amen. Go beyond people that you see. Pray for the saints all over the world. Pray for all the people of, of God. Amen. In all places. Amen. Yeah. Praise God that the Lord would help them to maintain and stay strong in the Lord. Amen. And keep themselves and not fall prey to the ungodliness that surpasses them. I mean, it's all around them. everybody. Amen. Praise God. There's going to be some people that's living for Jesus when it comes. i got to be one of them. Amen? Yeah. you got to be one of them. Amen? Yeah. Praise God. But if you start, if you start caving to stuff, amen? Right. Amen? You can cave to stuff and sit on pews. Don't cave to stuff. Amen? Mm -hmm. Don't cave to corruption. Be righteous people. Amen? Don't be self-righteous people, but be humble in your walk with God. And be righteous people. Be people that walk in the light as he is in the light. Amen? Amen. Be people that have, uh, are not walking in darkness. Amen? But are walking in the truth of God's Amen. word. Amen? He's a righteous judge, and he's not going to destroy righteous people. He's not going to destroy them. Amen? You may not be popular in this world. You may be like that man that sat outside that rich man's gate. It may look like, you know, the others are in favor with God instead of you. But you know what? It don't matter what other people say. It matters what he says. Amen. It matters.
matters what he sees. It matters our conscience toward him. Amen. Amen. Praise God. He sees you when nobody sees you. Right. Amen. Please him. Live to please him. Yes. Live to please him. Praise God. <clears throat> God wants people to be saved. Yeah. He wants people to be saved. Amen. He's soon to judge this world, folks. Yeah. He is soon to judge his world, but he's not going to judge his righteous people. He's not going to judge his people that are living for him. Right. Amen. And we need to be one of those people. Amen. It says in Ezekiel 33, 11, the Lord speaking, he said, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. Turn you, turn you from your evil ways, for why will you die? O oh, house of Israel. God does not want people to die lost. Amen. Amen. He wanted Abraham to intercede. He wanted Abraham to, to, to get a hold to God and say, Come on, Lord, spare thee. Spare thee. You know, he wanted somebody to, to intercede and to plead with God. Amen. Amen. He wanted somebody. It's not something that God delights in, destroying people. In fact, it says in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to us for not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. God's holding off his wrath. Amen. Yeah. He's held it off, but there's coming a time he won't hold it off no more. But he's held it off. The world has well deserved his punishment. Yeah. Amen. It has well deserved his punishment. Yeah. But because he's so kind and so good and so long-suffering, he's not willing the people to perish. He wants them to be saved. Yeah. He reaches for people. Yeah. Yeah. He reaches for people. Amen. Yeah. He's so clean and so pure and so holy and the environment that the world is partaking in I mean it's so dark and so unlike him and such a grief to him that it's going to push him to the brink where he's going to have to like he did in the flood purge it amen but he's not going to purge the righteous amen the Bible says that we're not appointed unto wrath. Amen. But to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. But it's important for us to live by his word. You know. Right. Praise God. Don't shun the word that you're going to stand before one day. Live by the word. Amen. Yeah. Praise God. It's the words of Jesus. Amen. It's the word of God. Amen. That one day all mankind will stand before. I'd rather kneel to it today. I'd rather submit to it today than one day stand before it and be ashamed that I haven't obeyed it and paid attention to it. Yeah. Amen. I want to obey the Lord. Yeah. Praise God. Amen. God wants us to be saved. Yeah. Amen. No man, and this is something I want to get across to you tonight. Amen. God is the judge. Yeah. Amen. And we need to focus our attention, amen, not on judging people, but on helping people to get to God. Amen. Amen. Yeah. amen. We are not the judge. We are not the one that people will one day stand before. What we need to do is pay attention to trying to help people make it. I want to help people make it. I can't water down the word and help people make it. That won't, that won't save nobody. Right. But I, I, I can care about people. I can help people to try again yeah. and to try again. Yeah. And sometimes people have to, be, have to try over and over again. But I want to be there and try to help people make it. Yeah. If they don't make it when it's all said and done, I want to know that I did my best to try to help them make it. Yeah, right. Don't you? Yeah. Amen. I'm not the judge. I'll never be the judge. So why should I feel that role? I shouldn't. But spend my time trying to help people to see what the Word of God says so that they can kneel to it today instead of in the future where they won't have no hope in kneeling to it. Yeah. Amen. Jesus himself 
In Luke chapter 6, verses 35 through 38, he said, But love your enemies, and do good, and lend, hoping for nothing again. And your reward shall be great, and you shall be the children of the highest, for he is kind unto the unthankful and to the evil. You know, he's kind to the evil. I don't feel like being kind to the evil like that. <laughs> Do you? No, but I want to be like my heavenly father, so I better change my attitude. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Huh? I mean, if I want to follow him, yeah. I got to realize that's my flesh. But I don't want to be kind to people being evil to me. That's flesh. Yeah. Hello? I got it just like you do. Yeah. I felt it before. You feel it. Amen. You got to stay focused on who you're trying to follow and who you're trying to please. You right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to please my judge. Amen. The lawgiver. Mm -hmm. Amen. Not appease my own you know, passions. Yeah. Then he says this. Listen to the next verse. Be ye therefore merciful even as your father also is merciful. Then he says, judge not. Listen to what this is important for you. Judge not, and you shall not be judged. Huh? That's, that's pretty promising. So be careful when you go and judge people. Because you're putting yourself in a place to be judged. Did you know that? Don't judge people. Amen. Be merciful as your Father in heaven is merciful. Judge not that you be not judged. Condemn not. You're going to hell. <laughs> Who said that? <laughs> Did that God just spoke through you or was that your own opinion? Well, they might repent. They might actually go to hell, but they might repent too before they come. Yeah, that's right. And they might be saved, right? Right. <clears throat> Some words are better not said. Mm -hmm. You may think that. And there's, I'm, I'm, I'm honest with you. I, you know, there's some people cause me to question if they're going to be saved at times, you know. But ultimately, I'm not going to let that be a subtle fact in my mind because God can turn it around. Amen. God can turn it around. Yeah. And for me to tell somebody that may... So discourage them that they'll never want to try again. They hinder them. Huh? They hinder them. I want to be a builder, don't you? I want to be a helper. I, I do want to tell people the truth of the Word of God. <laughs> Amen. But I, I want to take it to them in the vehicle of love and not with a handle. <laughs> with a sledgehammer. You know what I'm saying? The same truth is how you deliver it to them. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Judge not, you shall not be judged. Condemn not, and you shall not be condemned. And if that benefits you. Is that right? Yes. If you judge, you, you are going to be judged. If you condemn, you're going to be condemned. So don't do it, and you won't be. That, that's a plus for me, isn't it? I mean, that, that's a plus for yourself. Yes. Is that right? Amen. Then he says, give and it shall be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men give into your bosom. He's talking about what men will do to you. Amen. If you are a giving person, a mindful person, a good person, a person, persons will be good to you. It'll, it'll return to you. He says, and then he says this right here. He said, and this is important to what we're talking about. For with the same measure that you met, with all, it shall be measured to you again. What you put out is coming home. That's what it's saying. With what you give is coming back to you. Yes. That's important. I, I think a lot of people forget that. Amen. James said it like this in chapter 2, verses uh, 12 and 13. So speak you, and so do as they that shall be judged, we're talking about being judged, right? Yeah. By the law of liberty. Amen. Uh, whom the Son has set free is free indeed, right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. 
right? We're, we're free from the penalty of sin, aren't we? Whom the, so, so, so judge as they that shall be judged by the law of liberty. Amen. By the blood of Jesus, right? The blood of Jesus is in the law of liberty. Amen. There's forgiveness with Jesus. Amen. And so when you make your decisions, be conscientious. Amen. That there's mercy with God. Amen. And then he says this, in fact, the next verse. He says, for he that, for he shall have judgment without mercy that has showed no mercy. In other words, you'll be judged without any mercy to you if you don't show mercy. <laughs> so if you're going around showing mercy to people, you know what? Mercy is going to come back to you. It says, and mercy rejoices against judgment. Mercy rejoices against judgment. But if you ju have judgment without mercy, you're not going to have mercy. Do yourself a favor. Be merciful. Do your, and it'll come home to you. The chickens have come home to roost. You know? Amen. Praise God. Am I making sense to you? Are you hearing me? Amen. You need some mercy. Amen. Give mercy. Amen. Don't live condemning other people. Don't live judging other people. Yeah, you can tell the tree by the fruit it bears. I'm not saying that. Amen. Yeah, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they have God. Don't just be gullible to everything. That's right. Amen. But we're talking about people condemning people to being lost or saved. When that's God's judgment alone. Amen. It's God's place. Amen. I said that's God's place. He alone is the judge in regards to that. Amen. And I'm preaching this and teaching this for your benefit and your welfare because I want you showing mercy because I want mercy poured all over you. Amen. 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 I, want, I want you to, to not be a judgmental person because I don't want judgments poured upon you. I want mercy poured upon you. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Praise God. 1 Peter 4, 7, and 8. But the end of all things is at hand. Be therefore sober and watch into prayer. I mean, think, believes the things, that, uh, the, the things of the end are at hand, huh? And above all things. Everybody say above all things. That means to me, up on top of everything, the most important, right? Really important to have, right? This is really something important to have in your life. Amen. Above all things, have fervent. Amen. That don't mean cold charity. That's talking about heated up charity. Be fervent in it. Have, have fervent charity among yourselves. Why do you want to have fervent charity among yourselves? For charity shall cover the multitude of sins. Amen. Yeah. Maybe a good example of that is that woman with the alabaster box that came in and broke it at Jesus' feet, weeping and crying, and everybody looked at her and they thought, if this, or Jesus, they said, if this man was a prophet, he'd know what kind of woman this is. This is a sinner woman of town. <laughs> but you know who left there pleasing Jesus? It was that woman. Yeah. Amen. It was that woman. You know why? Because she was loving Jesus much. Amen. He wouldn't excuse his sin, but she found forgiveness. Amen. Because of her love for Jesus. Amen. Mm -hmm. He didn't let her keep continuing in sin. He never did allow people to continue in sin. But he's merciful to people. Amen. Uh, charity, which is love, shall cover a multitude of sins. Am I making sense to you? Is Amen. I'm just trying to preach to you something that's going to benefit you and help you to be a good Christian, a better Christian. I want to be a better Christian. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Romans 14, 4. Praise God. Who art thou that judges another man's servant? To his own master he standeth or falleth. Yea, he shall be holden up, for God is able to make him stand. Praise God. You know, there are going to be things. I've seen it ever since I've been in church. Amen where there are people that feel some things are okay and others feel that it's not okay. 
And you know what? In some of those things, people, if it's not clear in the Word of God, those people got to work out their own salvation with fear and trembling. But it's not for me to start casting stones at them. It's, you know? There's people putting up Christmas trees. I don't do it. I've never done it. But you know what? I love them. And, you know, though I may not agree in doing that, I just love them. And that's between them and the Lord. Yeah. Amen? Praise God. I, if, if somebody's worshiping an idol, bound to an idol, I will try to reach them and get them to turn away from that. Yeah. That's right. You know? There's some people that think I'm sinning because I like to drink a cup of coffee. <laughs> but you know what I feel? Free as a bird and drink all of it I want. There you go. Amen? Yeah. You know, I won't try to get them to drink one of them yeah. if they feel it's wrong. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Because it would violate their conscience. Yeah. Amen? I do because I love my brother. Yeah. Amen? People don't believe in eating pork or catfish. Or, and, there, and we've had people in churches that are, that are like that. I don't criticize them. I don't want to violate their conscience. I will never try to get them to partake of stuff that they don't believe is right. Amen? Praise God. It goes both ways. I don't condemn people. You know, if it's written out, if it's clear in Scripture, I will try to help people get out of sin. But I won't go around, you know, off of things that are personal things, convictions, and condemning people. I've always tried to avoid doing that. Amen. It's one thing if it's a doctrinal thing. Amen. Like wrong baptism. Or people saying you don't need the Holy Ghost. Those are things that are detrimental to people's souls. That's right. But we're talking about opinion stuff. Amen. I don't want to go around spending my time, you know, Debating on opinion things. I want to spend my time on helping my brother make it. Amen. Amen. I want to help my brother make it. Mm -hmm. Romans 14, my time is about up. Let me, let me read these and I'll quit. Romans 14, 7 through 13. For none of us live, uh, live to himself, and no man dieth to himself. For whether we live, we live unto the Lord, and whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live, therefore, or die, we are the Lord's. For to this end Christ both died and rose and revived, that he might be Lord both of the dead and living. Why, but why dost thou judge thy brother? Why dost thou set it not thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. For it is written, As I live, saith the Lord, Every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. So then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. Let us not therefore judge one another anymore, but judge this rather. Pay attention to this. This is what I'm talking about tonight. That no man put a stumbling block or occasion to fall in his brother's way. Instead of you know, getting all out of sorts about something that is an opinion that you hold and not a direct scripture. I mean, why don't we start spending our time trying to prevent our brother from falling and help our brother make it? Amen? Amen. Amen. We are our brother's keeper. Amen. Yes. Amen? I am my brother's keeper. I don't want to have the spirit of Cain that told the Lord, am I my brother's keeper? Yeah. No, I am my brother's keeper. Amen. I'm going to try to help my brothers make it. Yeah. I mean, I'm going to try to help my brothers make it. Amen? Yeah. Amen? Come on. If I have to pick them up and I have to carry them a bit, I want to pick them up and carry them. I told y'all this before, but when we started this church, I had a, I guess it was a vision. <laughs> and I saw two forces fighting. I mean, it was a fierce, fierce fight. And I knew that there was the uh, opposing forces, military, army, coming against us. And I was on this other side. And, and, uh, and, I, 
And I knew that the one that, side that I was on, there was Christians. They were with Christians. And it was a face-to-face -face combat going on. And as we were fighting the opposing forces, I know we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but this was something to uh, relay to me to give me an understanding of what I was involved in, being a Christian. Say, man, we're not fighting people, but we are fighting in a battle. We are in a battle. And so I saw this, and, and as we were fighting face-to-face -face combat with this opposing force, I saw people falling, and they were Christians. And I knew that while I was fighting, I couldn't quit fighting, but I had to reach down and pick them up and keep fighting. It was difficult, but I had to reach down and pick them up. And that's what the Lord wants us to know, that we must help one another make it. Amen? Amen. We're in a war, and sometimes people stumble. Sometimes people fall. Amen? When they fall, I don't want to stomp on them. And I don't want to stomp on them. I want to help them get back up. Get back up and, and walk with God. Amen? Amen? I want to have mercy. Because if I have mercy... If I don't judge, if I have mercy on others, mercy will come home to me. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. It'll come home to you. Yeah. If I condemn, I'll be condemned. If I judge, I will be judged. Yeah. Amen. If I have no mercy, I'll have judgment without mercy. Yeah. That's what it said. Yeah. You know what? I want the mercy of God. Amen. And you know what? His mercies are new every morning. Yes. Didn't you know that? They're new every morning. I need a dose of them every day, Adam. Every day, a fresh batch of mercy. Yeah. Amen. I need grace. Grace is God's favor to me that I don't deserve. Amen. There's, I don't deserve nothing from the Lord. I'm doing my best to live for Him, but I don't deserve nothing. Amen. And you know what his mercies are? His mercies are his compassions to you. Amen. I need God's mercies. Don't you? Mm -hmm. I want God's mercies. So I got to show compassion. Yeah. Amen. I got to be merciful to other people. We got to be those people that when we see that man half dead in the ditch, we don't pass him by, but we go and we use our resources to help him recover. Amen. Right? Like that good Samaritan. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. We got one. We got a judge. Yeah. But he's the only one that's truly the judge that's going to make the final decision. Amen. We want a good decision made on our part. And we want to see as many as we can that also will have a good decision made on their part. Right. Don't you? Yeah. I want to see people covered with the blood of Jesus and make it to heaven. Can you imagine going to heaven? One of these days, and I don't believe it's going to be that far, but one of these days you go to heaven and you look over to somebody. You might have had to put a lot of work in it to get them there, but just to see them there. Amen. To see them make it. They're on the other side. It's, they're safe, Brother Brandon. They're safe on the other side. Finally there. Finally there. The, the job is done. It's over. And they made it. They made it. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine that? Mm -hmm. That's going to be amazing. Yeah. Man, oh man, oh man, what a reward. Yeah. You think they're not going to thank you? Mm. What's that song? Thank you for giving to the Lord. Mm. You ever heard of that song? That's a pretty good song. Amen. They're going to make you cry sometimes. Amen. But you know what? That's going to be a reality. Amen. Help somebody make it. Stand with me. My time is, I went over a little bit. Forgive me. Praise God. Jeremiah, would you just listen to some word of prayer? Praise God. Lord, we thank you so much for this day. Thank you for blessing us tonight. Yes. Word.